Designing experiences which are responsive is an idea that describes the importance of allowing people to access content easily across multiple devices, especially since the rise in mobile device use has increased greatly over the last few decades. This idea has become widely known and referenced amongst the design community. Responsive design is accomplished by considering the design of digital experiences as they scale in size through different viewport breaking points. Typically, these breakpoints are to scale logically with the size of desktop screens, which tend to be the largest, laptops, tablets, and then mobile devices, which tend to be the smallest. You can give this idea a go with most digital experiences you come across these days. Head on over to the Zendesk homepage, which is the company I work for, and you'll see how the content shifts in size as I scale the viewport down. Now, what you just saw was an example of a marketing website homepage. You can also see how responsive design scales digital products. Here's an example with Notion. As I scale Notion down, it responds nicely, but this time, as I approach the smaller screen size, it sort of breaks and isn't really usable. This is likely because Notion would prefer that I download the mobile app if I want to use their product at the smaller screen sizes. And this is much more common with products. Often digital products will have a complementary mobile app to accompany their browser-based tool to accommodate for those smaller screen sizes to better personalize user experience for mobile users. When starting out with building screens for your user interface design work, you may be wondering which screen sizes to use to start designing with. Luckily, our tools are super smart these days and offer some general screen sizes you could use to get started. For example, here in Figma, you could use the desktop screen size, one of the laptop sizes, tablet, and the phone to get the full spectrum of what screen size your design will need to scale down to. That said, if you work at a product company which knows more specifically which size of screen and what device type the majority of the user base is using, it's always best practice to use those sizing guidelines instead. If you're a design student and working on a student project where the specific de device type doesn't matter much to the project that you're working on, then I recommend using the screen size of the devices that you have access to. Then when it comes to testing your design work, you can see how realistic they look to scale on your devices. And finally, later on, if you decide to create your design portfolio on platforms like Squarespace, Wix, or Webflow, these companies have created their website builder software with responsive design in mind. So you'll be able to more easily get a personal website up and running that is easily responsive for various sized devices. With these platforms, make sure to double check what your website looks like on mobile to test for any issues in the design as it scales down in size. To summarize, responsive design is critical to designing good digital experiences, so make sure to consider how your design scales at these different breaking points as you start to create completed design work. That's going to wrap up the video for today. If you're new here, hello, I'm Alexa. I create videos here on YouTube to help early career designers get set up for success with their career in design. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe if you want to catch the next video for me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.